Hey everyone and welcome back to Build UX. In this episode of the CRM Inbox series, we'll start designing the subcomponents we'll need for our header and then tackle the header layout itself. In the last episode, we tackled the light theme for the sidebar component. And we also started establishing more of our design atoms, specifically with our icon system. In this episode, we're going to tackle the header component, but we also need to address the subcomponents within this overall layout. So zooming in here, you can see that we have our search component. We have several icon menu buttons. We have the avatar for the user profile and this notification dot as well. So taking this in, we'd like to tackle the icons for light and dark themes first, and then we'll turn our attention to the search input and search form. Moving on, we'll have these menu options with the icon buttons and then the user profile. So with the avatar, we'll create that component for both small and large variations that we use throughout our design. And the notification dot, we also have a small and large variation as well. And with all of those components established, it'll be quick and easy to establish both light and dark themes for our header. Just to reference our reference for the light UI, it looks like mainly we have that high contrast light color throughout the design, some medium contrast elements, and then our accent comes into play. So first things first, let's turn our attention to our atoms page and let's get the light variation of our icon system. So I'm actually just gonna duplicate this entire artboard and let's rename it to icons light. Now opening up these layers, what we're gonna have to do is override the fill for each of these and then recomponentize these icons for the light theme. So I'm just gonna expand each of these layers real quick. Now, because we use Boolean operations and flatten our icons into a single vector for each of these, it'll be quick and easy to select each of the icons and adjust their fill accordingly. So with each of the icons selected, we can change its fill from high contrast dark to the white theme. And then let's grab our frame and swap out that background as well. All right, so with those all addressed, we can collapse these down and then componentize each of these for our light theme variation. So first off, we have to componentize each of these layers. So I'm gonna go one by one and use Control or Command plus Alt or Option and K to turn them into unique components. So if we componentize this, you'll see that the dark icon is nested within it. So any changes we make to the dark icon will be respected, but we'll retain that fill override for the light theme. Now, instead of renaming the single component, I'm gonna go through and componentize each of these icons and then we'll batch rename all of them at once. Now to make quick work of going through each of these layers, I'm gonna hit the tab key to navigate to the next layer and then use the shortcut for componentizing as we go. So you can quickly move through each of these layers using the tab key, which will speed up the workflow quite a bit. All right, so with those light icons taken care of, Let's go into our molecules page and create the corresponding light theme variations for these icon buttons that we created in the last episode. So first thing, I'm gonna grab the frame itself and change the main background to be the light theme variation. And then what's great is we can actually drill down into these components and swap them out for the light theme icon. So here we have a nested component for the dark icon for the search. Let's go into our light theme icon light default and search. The next thing we need to determine is our hover and focus styles. So I'm gonna turn both of those on. For the hover background, let's go to elevation background one start. And that's actually the same color as our main background. So instead, let's bump that down to elevation one background end. So there's just some subtle contrast there. And lastly, let's grab that focus ring and switch it over to high contrast light. This is looking good. Let's componentize this and rename it for the light theme real quick. Now I'm gonna remove these other two instances because we wanna base our hover and focus variations off of our new light theme master component. So we'll duplicate this twice, drag these down in our layers panel.
And let's turn on that hover plate for our hover variation. We need to disable these by default. And then bring in the hover plate just for this variation. So we componentize that. Let's rename it from default to hover. This third one, we're going to bring in both the hover plate and the focus ring, componentize it, rename it for focus. Now I'm going to remove these two smaller ones for hover and focus. We'll repeat that same pattern, drilling down into this small icon button, swapping this chevron instance out for its corresponding light variation. Turn on the hover plate and focus ring. We'll do elevation one background end, and then the focus ring is high contrast for the light theme. Turn these off by default, componentize this, and make sure that the light theme is part of the component variation name. Again, we'll drag out two instances. First one, just turn on that hover plate and rename to hover. And the next one, hover and focus ring, rename to focus. All right, with these icon buttons taken care of, we can now turn our attention to the actual search input. And this will be more of a search form because we have both the input with a placeholder text and the submit button. And we'll want to think through what are all the various states of this component that we need to think through, we need to design or plan for. So looking at this, we obviously have this inactive empty state. So just kind of a placeholder state where we see this placeholder text. Next up, we have to think through what does it look like when the user is actually typing in this field? So sort of an active variation. Lastly, what if they've typed something in and move focus elsewhere? We have kind of a filled state for this component. And then a couple other things we have to consider here is what does it look like if the user hovers over the submit button or has keyboard focus on the submit button? And we'll want to account for both the dark and light themes here. Other important things that we could consider here is if we would show a label when the user has focus within this input. I think for now I'm going to stick pretty close to this original design. We would also want to account for any error states, but search doesn't typically have error states because you can kind of search for anything. The only thing we would might consider is what would it look like if somebody was searching through this and it didn't return any results. But since that would probably affect the rest of the UI, I won't really focus on that for now. So returning to our molecules page, we're going to reuse these buttons directly now. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new frame. Let's give it that main background for the dark theme. And let's rename the search inputs dark. I'm going to move it to the bottom of my layers panel. Make sure it's spaced properly. And we can make the width of this search input whatever we want. I think I'm going to start with a nice width that's part of our spacing scale and something that it provides enough room for a rather large search string. So with that, I'm probably going to do probably a 256 wide component. We can always increase the width of this as we go. With that, I also want to give it a nice, neat height that falls along an 8 pixel grid. So let's go with 48 as a start. So I'm going to rename this to search input. This will be the plate. And as you saw in our designs, there's no background color, so I'm going to remove that fill. I'm immediately going to group this and rename it to search input dark, and this will be for the default state. So basically that empty state where we just show the placeholder. Now within the search input plate, let's drag in that newly created icon button for the dark theme. We just want to drag in the default state of that as well. We're going to pin this to the left and the top of that component. And Actually, we want it to always be vertically centered. So we'll have left and center for our constraints. Now, sometimes I like to rename my nested components. So let's say that this is the search submit. And we could probably just say search instead of search input here, since it is part of the whole form. Next up, let's address our placeholder text. So if we drill into our layers here, it looks like we have Poppins regular 15. And we didn't address the line height because this was all just a manual draft. So if we go to our particles, let's look at what our options are for typography. Now, looking at our typography here, I think I want to use body copy, but I think this line height might be a little too large. So this is a good example of where we might create a dedicated type spec 
specific to certain use cases. So line height with body copy needs to be rather tall, so that way it's really easy to read as you have multiple lines of text. But within single line use cases, like a text input, having this much line height is kind of overkill. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this body type spec here, and let's call this one text input. I'm gonna keep the font size the same, but what we can do is detach this instance and let's adjust the line height to something more comfortable for single line use. All right, so I think 24 pixels is plenty for this use case. So we'll want to include those details here and let's create a new type spec directly called text input. I'm gonna rearrange these files real quick just to accommodate this new type spec. All right, and with that, added as a text style, we can use that directly in our new component. So dragging out some text, let's have the placeholder text in place. And our fill, we want this to be the medium contrast for the dark theme. I'm going to auto resize this to fit. And let's make sure it's inside of our component. We can rename it to search placeholder and then get it centered vertically. All right, so at this point, I would like to use some layout grids to establish spacing between the icon button and the placeholder text. So we can actually componentize this group. It's already named as needed. And then we can add a layout grid here to achieve that spacing. So I think I want 16 pixel spacing between this icon and the placeholder text. So I'm gonna use columns. Let's use a left column. It's gonna be 16 pixels wide. And we'll offset it by 16 pixels as well. I'm actually gonna retain that gutter of 16, just so we have something solid to reference from. And if we open up the color palette, I don't know why we can't select swatches here, but let's just find that local color we used for our other layout grids. So the offset, since the icon button is 48 pixels wide, actually needs to be 48. And then we can use this to space our search placeholder. Now let's set our constraints on everything just to make sure those are set up properly. So again, our search submit button is left and center. The placeholder text will also be left and center. In our search plate, I like to scale with the left and right and center that as well. And that way the height is always preserved because we're very intentional about having 48 pixels for the height. All right, so this would be our default state. Let's turn our attention now to that active state. So what I'm gonna do is account for all the variations in this master component. And then as we create our separate variations, we'll just turn on and off layers as needed. So let's duplicate the search placeholder text. I'm gonna rename this bottom one to active text. And let's turn off this placeholder for a moment so we can focus our attention on getting this styled as needed. So when it's active, I'd like to bring in the high contrast color and let's add an example search string, maybe for one of the names in our design here. So it looks like Annie Lynch is one of the names in our design. The user might be trying to find emails from that particular sender. So let's put in Annie and then maybe have a partial search string here to show that the field is active. And one last touch is we can bring in a cursor that's the same height as our text. And let's just give that high contrast color as well. So let's call this the search cursor. And then we'll want to group these two items and this will be our active text as needed. Another consideration here when this input is active is to provide some sort of focus state for the input itself. So to keep things nice and minimal here with our design, I think I'll just add a one pixel border that spans the full width of this component. So that needs to be 256 by one pixel and will also be the high contrast color. Let's drag this into our component and make sure it's pinned to the bottom. So we'll scale this with the left and right, and it always remains with a vertical constraint at the bottom of the component. 
So this will be our search bottom border that we bring in when the input is active or focused. And that should take care of this active state that we're mocking up. So we can turn off the active text. And next up, we need to think through what is the filled state of this component look like. So we'll take that active text, let's drag it out, and rename it to search build text. And with this, the user has completed typing their search. So we'll complete the username there. That should be all we need for that filled state. In this state, that wouldn't be any focus because the user has completed their search and maybe moved focus somewhere else in the UI. Lastly, all we would need to do is show the hover and focus styles for the search submit button. Since that is already a component that has separate instances, we would just be able to swap those as needed. So now we're ready to drag out a new instance of this component and start thinking through how we demonstrate each of those various states. So the first one is that active search string. We'll bring in that active text in the bottom border. And this is ready to componentize. So this would be active. Let's drag out another state from our default instance and use this for the build state. And one thing I have to adjust is turning off our filled text and bringing in the placeholder for that default state. So we'll have to adjust a couple of these real quick. This third one is just our filled state. And then we can keep making our way through these variations. So next up, we want filled text, the bottom border, no placeholder. And then instead of the default icon button state, we want to change that to hover. I'm going to rename this again to search submit. And we can componentize this, indicating that this has submit hover. We need to make our frame a little larger here. Let's drill down into this last variation. This one is going to have filled text, the border bottom, and then focus on that search submit button. So we have search, submit, focus. All right, so this takes care of all the variations of this component for the dark theme. What we can do now is simply drag out a copy of this whole frame, and we'll be able to restyle this very quickly for our light variations. So applying the main background of light, and you're gonna see how much this organization of our color styles and our component themes is gonna pay off now. It's very quick to retheme these components. So first off, go into our icon buttons light, this will be the default. We can rename this to search submit, placeholder text, medium contrast for the white theme. Turn that off, bring in our active state, grab that text, do the same, high contrast, dark, and apply that to the cursor as well. Build text gets a similar treatment here. And that bottom border is the last item there. All right, so this gets componentized. And all we need to do is rename this to be the light variation. I'm actually going to remove these other instances because we're going to have to base it off this master component anyway. So next up, we want to bring in our active state, bottom border and active text, Ponetize this. And I'm always dragging from that default instance because I don't want to nest too many layers deep. So we have our field state to address next. 
So we have our filled text, no bottom border, as focus has moved outside of this component, and we can rename this to be filled text. Next up, we have filled text and hover on our search submit button. So we can toggle that over to the hover state. And let's just rename this again, search submit as needed for a little bit more clarity. And we can rename the component to submit hover. All right, last one, and then we'll be done with this component entirely. We have focus, build text, border bottom, componentize this whole thing, and rename to submit focus. All right, now I think we want to keep this episode a little bit shorter if possible. So the last thing I want to tackle is this notification dot component. So we have large and small variations, and we will want to adjust the box shadow on these for both the light and dark themes. So what I'm going to do is grab this notification dot. Let's copy it and paste it into our atoms page here. And we'll use this as a nice reference. We'll also want to grab an instance of that smaller dot as well. So one thing I'm noticing is with the dark theme, we use the accent color for the notification dot here. Here it's some sort of grayscale gradient similar to these other elevations that we have in our design. But when we look at the light theme documentation, you can see that it does reuse the accent colors directly. So for a little more consistency between themes, I think I'm going to always stick with this accent color gradient instead. And for the various themes, we can just adjust the box shadow to be a little bit more subtle for the white variation. So I'm going to wrap these in a frame. Let's call this notification dots. And this will be for the dark theme first. We'll apply our main background color so we can see what we're working with in the context of that theme. And let's first focus on adjusting some of this sizing. So I'm going to rename this to be notification dot. And this will be for the large theme. And right now our sizing is 14 by 14. I'd rather stick with things on an 8 pixel grid. Let's bump this up to be 16 by 16. Next up, we have this linear gradient applied, and this was just manually sampling what we found in the design. So I'd like to have something a little bit more consistent used throughout these components. So looking at our color styles, we have the accent background start and end points for that gradient. I'm going to drag out two swatches real quick, get those applied just so we can sample them nice and easily when we're working on these components. So for this linear gradient, Let's grab that start point and end point. It should be a pretty subtle change here. As I mentioned, I'm going to do the same thing with this notification dot small variation. So let's grab gradient, sample the start and end stops. And that's looking good. What we can do is actually grab that linear gradient and turn it into a color style for further reuse. So notification dot gradient is what we'll call this. And let's make sure that gets applied to the small variation as well. Next up, I want to figure out what drop shadow we need for each of these. So I think the blur and spread are looking good. Let's make sure this hex code is something that fits in within our design. So we have a hue of 234 consistently throughout our accent colors and our various grays. I think I want to drop this down to be a little bit darker, but maybe bump up the saturation a bit here. All right, so that's looking good. It's a little too strong on the opacity. So let's turn that down 40, 50. I think I like it around 40, but we can always adjust this further. So with that drop shadow, I'm going to add this as an effect style, and we'll call it notification.shadow. This is for the dark theme. Let's get that same thing applied to our small notification dot. And I think that's it 
in terms of all we need for these. One thing is I think this particular notification dot could use a little bit more roundness. So let's just bump up that border radius by one pixel. A lot of the design elements throughout this UI have a slightly squared off circle or squircle as they're called look to them. So that just adds a little bit more roundness to it, but still gives it that squircle like effect. Let's componentize these directly and then get our files cleaned up here just a little bit. All right, and then lastly, let's duplicate this frame and we'll create the light theme variations. All right, so on the frame, main background, we'll toggle that to the light. I think the only change we need to make here is this drop shadow is a little too strong at the moment. So let's detach this style and let's turn the opacity down a little bit here. I think I want to drop it down to around 25% here. So let's add this as notification dot shadow or light as the variation there. And then all we need to do is apply that to our small variation and we can componentize these directly. I forgot to include the theme as part of the component naming. So let's make sure we update that. All right, with our naming a little bit more cleaned up. Another thing I'm noticing is the small variation actually is a 10 by 10. I think I'd prefer to bump that up a little bit to a 12 by 12, just again to stick to our eight pixel grid whenever possible. So we can resize the component frame to fit. And let's just adjust our spacing in our document here. Make sure everything's good. All right, so with those design atoms and molecules taken care of, I think this is a good place to stop for this episode. In the next episode, what we'll do is take advantage of these design system components to rapidly build out the remaining header component that we need for the top of our UI. The only remaining nested component that we'll have to create is this avatar for the large and small variation, which should be pretty quick to address. So thank you so much for watching and be sure to look out for the next episode.